Business Brain, episode 487 for Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a topic or three, we run it through our machine here that lets us analyze and crunch and process so that we can train our business brains a little bit better together each time so that we can keep on living those charmed lives here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Cranking Good. through. Yeah. Yeah. There's always, there's always stuff happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Some, One of the things, of stuff. Uh, you know, I use Slack a lot. I, you and I oh, use yeah. it for, for Me business too. brain. We use it for backbeat. I think I have, I don't know, six or eight different Slack groups, maybe more, probably more that I'm part of. I have one for every band that I'm in. It's just a great tool to kind of pull all the conversation together and compartmentalize it in meaningful ways and all that good stuff. So I have one for every business, one for every band, and then one for, I don't know, other little hobby things too that I'm interested How in. How many? Let's let's get to count. One. Let me count oh, my one, two. Well, on three. this computer, I've got seven, but I know that there I, I, are at yeah. least four that I don't have on this computer. So Yeah, I have yeah. nine yeah, uh, workspaces in Slack. <laughs> it's an awesome product. We've done shows about Slack. So mm -hmm. if you search Slack up at businessbrain.show, you can uh, hear we talk about that tool. But what happened with Slack recently? Well, they changed their user interface, which, <laughs> yeah, I know. Ah, change is terrible. Some change is terrible. Uh, all change is, is going to trigger change resistance in us. So anytime... One of these things that I, these tools that I use every day changes, I try to just adapt to it, right? I, I give myself yeah, sure. a couple of weeks because I know that I'm human and so I'm going to resist this change. Well, the change that they made to Slack was when you're in multiple workspaces, you used to have along the, the left side of the window on the desktop, you would see all of your workspaces along the left side and then mm. whichever one you were selected yeah. You know, you would see that sort of the, the you know, the, the vision into that in the rest of the window. But you would still always see all of your workspaces over there on the left. So it made it easy. Yeah, to a just sidebar. Go, a yeah. sidebar. Yeah, exactly. And you, you could go and click to get to one. But for me, more importantly, I could see if there were notifications for me because it would be badged. You know, each of the, the workspaces in the sidebar would have a badge if there was a notification. They did away with the sidebar. They stacked it instead of of leaving it there all the time. And so you would only see the icon for the workspace that you were in. And I know that there's some of you listening who are nodding your heads right now. Like, you know, you're experiencing yeah. this, you're living this. You and several other people are like, Hey man, did you see the note that I put for you in Slack? And it's like, Nope, sure didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. Right. I and, figured there's something going on. Yeah. And, and this kept happening and, I'm, and sometimes, you know, things just get buried. You, you miss an email, sure. you miss a text message, whatever. You miss a, a Slack notification, it happens. But when this was happening more often than it usually does for me, I was like, okay, what's going on? And this morning I dug into it and, and of course I, I realized, oh, it's because this sidebar is not there anymore. I'm missing that. That's why I'm not seeing these notifications. Yes, they're coming through. Right. But when a notification comes in, if I can deal with it in that moment, Great. I, I'll click on it and I'll go to wherever it is and I'll deal with it. But otherwise, it's like, well, I know that I'll see it because I have a workflow that allows me vision into the things I need to see. And it has worked and I've I've tweaked it. But but the tool changed. And so suddenly I wasn't getting this automatic vision into this that I was used to seeing. And uh, and so this morning I, I was like, I got to figure this out, man. And I dug into it and I realized something. Slack a, a day or two ago changed it again. And now you can get what they call the workplace workspace switcher, which is uh. that sidebar. You can get it back and you do it. And we'll put a link in the show notes uh, at businessbrain.show to do this. But the way you do it is you, you have to refresh your Slack or just quit and relaunch. It, it's because they changed this. And so it's not in the interface if you haven't refreshed or relaunched, but you probably have, if you're, if you're only hearing about this now on the 27th, cause they did this about a week ago. Uh, but you go and you refresh the interface or relaunch Slack. And then you, uh, click on your workspace drop down the thing that shows all the workspaces. And at the very bottom of that, you'll see 
show workspace switcher. And if you click that, the sidebar reappears and it gives me everything that I wanted. It probably gives you folks everything you wanted too. So it's in, like, it's, it's a little tip, but it also reminds me of something that I learned sort of alongside of the two week rule, Shannon, that, that business yes. partner of mine that taught me, listen, anytime I have something I want to try out or in, even if I, well, any, I have some, anytime I have something I want to change, I tell people that it's a two week experiment, even okay. though I know it's going to be permanent, right? We've talked about this on the show before, but what he also told me at the same time was, and if there's something that's like a real showstopper, people are going to tell me about it anyway. But if I tell them it's an experiment, I won't hear about the, the little minor complaints. I'll only hear about the big ones. And this kind of reminded me of that, you know, that because you can backtrack on permanent change and people will let you know when there's a problem. Now, Slack pushed this out as permanent change. I don't know if that's such right, a good that's idea. Right. They backtracked, which but was then they at least they listened. Yeah. 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 I thought that was great. And I, I love that experiment uh, concept that you've talked about, this two week thing. It, it's just uh, like my scream when you mentioned change. You know, many, many people, most people, you know, they're, they're, they get itchy and, uh, concerned when you talk about change. So this experimental thing allows us you, you know, to ease them into it. Even if you've already decided it's hey, this permanent is the way it's going to be. But yeah. if there's and, something you've missed, yes. someone will tell you like, I mean, yeah. I guess we could do that for two weeks, but you understand that it's, it's, we're going to lose, you know, half our revenue if we do that. And if you didn't know that, then you're like, Oh, I'm glad they said something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's so, one of these fascinating things. I, I, um, I, I'm glad that they they backed off of this or evolved this change. Same. Yeah. 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 And and they owned it. They were like, even in their tweet, they said, consider this pain point addressed. I like it. It's good stuff. All right. Hey, look, while we're here, I have a great podcast recommendation for you. When it comes to Apple, the folks over at Twit know what they're talking about. Leo Laporte, the founder of Twit.tv, bought his first Mac almost 40 years ago in 1984 and has been an Apple lover ever since. That's probably why they have three, not one, not two, but three Apple podcasts on the Twit Podcast Network. The oldest, of course, is Mac Break Weekly. Started almost 20 years ago, Alex Lindsay, Andy Anotko, Jason Snell, and Leo talk about the latest Apple news. Sometimes they even have me on with them. They're Apple fans, but they're not Apple fanboys. They call it as they see it. And sometimes they're even a little hard on Apple. They also do a show called iOS Today with Micah Sargent and Rosemary Orchard. If you're into iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, or Apple TV, you'll love iOS today. And then, of course, there's Hands on Mac. Inside tips from Micah Sargent on getting the most out of your Apple devices every single week. Expert analysis, helpful advice, and entertaining discussions. Go to twit.tv slash Apple to find your next favorite Apple podcast. And our thanks to the folks at Twit for doing this swap with us. Hey, Shannon, you ever have, uh, you ever have bad news you need to share? Do you like sharing bad news? <laughs> well, depends on who I'm sharing it with, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there is often bad news. There's lots of companies, you know, as the economy's kind of tight, tightened up and we've in this, uh, I don't know if you call, I guess it's officially not a recession, but there's some weirdness going on. And yeah, it, Lack of, of confidence in the, uh, in the economy yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of tech places laying off, you know, tens of thousands of workers. And, and it got me thinking, you know, as, as business owners, you, you, you have to share bad news. I mean, it's going to come at you and, um, you know, you think of it mainly like in those examples, okay, how do I share bad news with my employees? But I think there's more to it. You know, how do you share bad news with your customers? And even that Slack example, we just talked about, you know, they, they made a mis kind of a little mistake and tweak and they came back and owned it. I thought that was great. And also how do you share bad news to like your investors, you know, a bank, um, I definitely think it's worth discussing and uh, sharing some tips and and then getting some feedback from our listeners. Well, you, you know, the yes, and and please feedback at businessbrain.show. We love to hear from you. And we've got some feedback to share, I think, on Friday's episode, too. Um, but I when I need to deliver bad news, the first thing I do is I start thinking about my audience. Right. What do yeah, I know? And, and if it's someone 
If it's my employees, I probably know them well enough, so I know how to couch it. If it's my business partners, I you know, I have some business partners who are absolute like doom and gloom skeptics about everything. I have other business partners who are, you know, overly optimistic. I, I find both to be a very good thing, like in 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 the right doses. <laughs> yeah, but sure. but bad news, I will. Like I'll overplay the bad news to the optimists so that it makes an impression on them, you know, and and maybe they'll be like, oh, wait, like we can't just ignore this. The the pessimists, I will down not not necessarily downplay the bad news, but couch it in a way of like, okay, hey, look, here's a like, like if we're talking about okay, revenues are down, right? Well, yeah, look, yes, revenues are down. Here we are. We've I've seen this before. You know, I've been I've been running businesses like this for 30 years. I've seen cycles happen. We are in a you know, we have I mean, from 2019 through the beginning of 2022, maybe even 2018 through the beginning of 2022, the economy was rocking. Right. And COVID yeah. added to that for a lot of businesses, for for some yes. businesses. Of course, it, it was it was terrible. But for a lot of businesses, you know, the government was fueling money into the economy. I run online businesses. And so that's where the money went and it was great. But starting in 2022 and through this year, things have been a lot softer. And so going to, you know, the partners of mine that maybe haven't seen like the 2008 downturn or the 2001 downturn for the internet stuff. It's like, okay, let me tell you about this. And let me put this in perspective. What we're seeing now isn't nearly as bad as either of those two. And I have businesses that are still alive today that survived those two things. Yeah. I, you know, I know what it's like to, to, to deal with it, but so it's couching the bad news in a way that allows it to land. Hopefully the way you as the deliverer of like such news wants it to land. Yeah. And so, so step one, know your audience. Right? There you go. Yes. And, and, and do that for me. Uh, I think there's a couple of, couple of important points. Don't hesitate. The longer you wait, oh, yeah. the worse it gets tougher. And oftentimes the bad news you want to share and you think you're the only person that knows, everybody already knows anyway. Yep. If your business has slowed down, everybody knows it. And if you have to talk to your staff about cutbacks or layoffs, sooner is better. So that's, you know, uh, so know your audience do it in a timely fashion. And here's number three, which I think might be the most important. I know it sounds, maybe it sounds weird, but don't say you're sorry. Oh, never apologize. It's yeah. implied that you're sorry. Of course you're sorry you have to lay people off. Of course you're sorry that business is down. But if you say these words in a, or in a meeting or you send it in an email, it brings person, it, it makes it personal. And people attach that personal thing. So it, it becomes more of your fault. And it really, more times than not, it's, well, it maybe it's your fault, but uh, more times than not, it's not your fault. It's just the situation that you find yourself in. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, no, if you no, really no, yeah. screwed something up. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, then, blew it. then yeah. own that. Own it. Yeah. Own but it. but own like it. what's yeah. happening with the economy right now? Right. I, I didn't cause this. Like <laughs> I can't yeah, take blame exactly. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I, I even think if you screwed up, there's ways to do it where you can apologize and like, um, I really screwed up. I own this. Yep. Um, here's what I'm going to do to make it right. That word, I'm sorry. It, it, it also, people bristle at it and they think like, you know, he's just playing like you're, you, you're asking for empathy mm. and you're not. No. It's like, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on this. And, uh, right. either the, you know, this is what's going to happen. So no sorries. Um, but what about if, is it, how is it different if you have to, uh, give bad news to a customer, right? You've done something, you lost all their data yeah. if you're in the tech, tech business. Uh, maybe in the, at I've that been point, there. You, you, you do have to say you're sorry. Um, cause it, it, it depends if it's yeah. your fault, Yes, then you do. But, but I'm sorry often comes in, in those scenarios. I'm sorry is a costly phrase. Yeah, and so it is. <laughs> in that you got to I'm you, laughing you, because I've been here too. You you wind up owning the problem at that point. Yeah, right? right now, right. if it is if like if you broke it, then maybe it is correct for you to own the problem. And so saying 
I'm sorry is the, the right thing to do. Like, I'm sorry. We lost you all your have data. have a quick follow up. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I need, I need to tell you this work is going to be free. Y- you know, yeah. something like that. Whatever. Like, Correct. yeah, but that's usually going to be implied by the receiving party when you yeah. start apologizing uh, and, and truly owning a problem. I remember I had one client um, who, and this was with a Mac, I think it was an SE30. So this was the old, old, old style of Mac where it was like all in one, looks like the original Macintosh, you know, and she needed me to put RAM in her computer to replace the RAM that was in there. And I said to her, I said, listen, I know I've done this before. I know what to do. However, I also know that the RAM is on a motherboard that is underneath the screen and De- and there needs to be a pressure applied to remove the RAM that's in there and then to put the new chips in. It is possible. I've seen it happen. I've caused it to happen where you wind up breaking the seal on the monitor and the display is now shot. So this might be a point of no return here if we try to do this. And she said, well, this computer is no good to me as it is. I need to try and put this RAM in. And if I can't put the RAM in it, then I need to get a different computer. And I said, okay, here we go. Because it was an older yeah. machine. You know, I'm like, I, right. I know how these seals are. And sure enough, I'm in there, you know, trying to wiggle one of the chips out. And I hear, yeah, yeah. Snap. And I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, that was the sound, wasn't it? And I was like, yep. And it was all I could do to not utter the words, I'm sorry. But I knew that like she was prepared for this. I was prepared for this. I caused it to happen. In a sure. sense, it was my but you, fault. You but prepared her for that. Exactly. And yeah. uh, and so it was like, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not going to buy I, your I, computer I, from you. So, yeah. 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 And I think that the if you have to break bad news to the customer, you really need to learn about the two tokens. Um Yes. Customer service technique. And and if you if you go to businessbrain.show and just search for token, uh, you'll find an episode. We'll we'll put one in the show notes, a link to it. But we've talked about this this method a, a number of times. It's super powerful. Um and it, it it it's definitely worth learning about because you want to it's all about knowing your the, who you're talking to, right? Knowing yep. your audience is yep. like number one. Yep. How do you present it in such a way that you get them on your side. That should be your number one focus. Yes. How do you, we're going to solve this problem together. Uh, I'm not just going to say, I'm sorry, and drop it on you and run. I'm in this for the long run. We're going to do, you know, this This problem is going to be solvable and we're going to work together. So uh, the two tokens thing is really important. But Yep, um, yep. Yeah. I agree. So, and if you don't so know the, about the two tokens, I'll put a link in the show notes at businessbrain.show yeah. to uh, where you can you can listen and and learn about the two tokens of uh, of it's incredibly service. powerful, super powerful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you folks it's, do in these scenarios? Feedback at businessbrain.show. Let us know. We want to know. You know, we we love hearing from you, and and uh, we like sharing everything, and we, we like it, that like. We do this show together. I, I say it at yep. the beginning that we're we're we all learn tuning our business brains together. I, I I mean that we're all on the same level here. We're we're just trying to trying to perfect this, and we know that perfection is simply a point way down the line. We're just working towards it every day. Yeah. Fun stuff. Make sure uh, make sure you subscribe to the show. Either, you know, in your whatever podcast app, the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, whatever it is, make sure you stay subscribed. That way you get all the episodes and you can keep on living that charmed life with us, huh? See you next uh, we'll see you on Friday.